Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today's video is a tabletop review and comparison of the original Springfield Saint and the new Springfield Saint Edge. We're going to start off with an overall comparison of the two, moving through a point-by-point -point analysis and comparison so you can get an idea of exactly what they changed when they went from the, uh, from the standard Saint over to the Edge to see if an upgrade is reasonable for you or if you want to spend the extra money getting into the Edge. Anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. That's coming up now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, the, the main premise of this is gonna be price point oriented. So as we all know, the Saint released about a year ago and it, it, it retails in roughly the eight to $900 range. You typically now can find them on the cheaper end of that scale, around 800 bucks. Um, in the coming months, we might find these a little bit cheaper, kind of in the 750-ish or so range. But anyway, that's your basic price point. Now on the edge, these, these of course are now entering the marketplace and they are going to be retailing at about the $1,100 to $1,300 price point. I believe the MSRP on these is $1,300. I try not to focus too much on MSRP because most uh, retailers, especially small retailers, not box stores, don't really ever charge MSRP. And you definitely won't find MSRP online. So uh, like I said, recommended, or I guess what actual retail will probably be on these is about 11 to 12. So we are seeing about a four to $500 price difference. And, uh, you know, uh, kind of the whole point of this is to see, okay, well, what has changed and what, what, what changes that have they made and what are you getting for that extra four or $500? So you can decide if that upgrade is, uh, is something that you would be interested in or if you see value in it yourself. So let's go ahead and move through that. Starting off with the overall specs, okay, so the original Saint does have a weight of six pounds, 11 ounces, and the Edge actually has a weight of six pounds and three ounces, so it's about three quarters of a pound lighter, and you do absolutely feel that. And as we move through the review, I will explain what they've done to lighten up the load on that. So the Saint has an overall collapsed length of 32 and a quarter inches. Now the collapsed length on this one is 32.5, so it is about uh, a quarter of an inch longer, which isn't a huge difference. It doesn't really matter, especially when you're talking about a shoulder weapon, but a lot of that length we could probably attribute to the muzzle brake. Uh, but anyway, let's move on from there. Uh, the length that is extended on the original Saint is 35.5 inches and the extended length on the edge is 35.75. So again, a quarter of an inch is, is what we would expect. Okay, let's go ahead and bring it in and take a look at the barrels. Now I do have the edge up here at the top and the standard Saint down here at the bottom. Now, both of these are 16 inches in length and they are chrome moly vanadium and melanite treated inside and out. They do both feature a one and eight twist rate. Now the thread pitching on both is one half by 28. Down here on the bottom on the Saint, you will see an A2 birdcage flash hider. It is different from the A1 that the uh, vent ports are uh, reaching from the three o'clock to the six o'clock position on top of the flash hider. And it um, is solid down here on the bottom. That's of course to help keep debris from blowing back up at you uh, or, or giving kind of creating a signature that would give your position away if you're laying prone or anything like that. Now up here at the top, we do have a muzzle brake which is a Springfield. It is manufactured by Springfield. It does utilize a, a baffled system, which is really good in keeping that muzzle flip down uh, and, and just, just really good at uh, overall maintaining your recoil. Now I'm gonna bring these in just a little bit closer for you so we can take a look at the gas blocks and the sights. So down here on the Saint, you do have a standard A2 uh, gas block and front side assembly. Now, of course, you adjust your elevation up here on the front post. You can use an AR-15 tool or anything like that to assist you. Uh, so uh, that option is available to you. Now, keep in mind the gas block is here and it is affixed with tapered pins. So if you do want to remove that gas block, um, you will have to have a little bit of gunsmithing experience to do that. You can replace if you want to with a low profile gas block. Uh, and really the reason for that would be to keep this uh, front sight block out of your way. Uh, if you want to uh, run a, a magnified optic or anything like that on there, but it's not entirely uh, necessary. You could always run a riser on the back of the rifle, but everybody's uh, options and opinions may vary. But anyway, you are somewhat limited in what you can do because of this being here. And it is just a standard rudimentary front sight. Now you will notice down here, there is a bayonet lug which you can actually on these run a bayonet if you want to. This is a 16 inch barrel with a mid-length gas system. So the 
uh, front sight base is a little bit closer forward to the end of the muzzle uh, than you would have on a traditional 16 inch barrel carbine. So you can run that bayonet if you want. It'll actually fit around here on the collar on the uh, on the flash rider and fit right down here to your bayonet lug. But that's a lot of people, you know, might not do that. Uh, but that option is available to you. Up here on the edge, you do not, you have a low profile gas block, which is actually hidden under the free float handguard. And I'll talk more about this handguard in a minute. But the gas block on this actually is adjustable. So that's uh, interesting. It gives you a little bit more variety and usability there. Uh, up here, you do have a rail mounted front sight base. So you do have a rail running the entire length of the top of the handguard, like you see here. It's standard 1913 Picatinny rail. Now, this does match very well with the rear sight base, which you'll see here in a minute, uh, which is Springfield manufactured. You do have one half MOA uh, adjustment up here on the front sight base for elevation. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the handguards while we're at it. Like I mentioned, these are both mid-length gas systems. Uh, really, the main there's basically two advantages to a mid-length gas system. One is helping you in recoil. Uh, does just keep a general lower recoil. The second thing is, is it gives you much more real estate up here on the handguard. Uh, so you can attach more lights, lasers, anything you want like that, or it just gives you generally more room for your hands, which could be uh, potentially really beneficial if you're wearing like large winter gloves or anything like that. So now down here on the original Saint, the handguards are polymer in construction and they are heat shielded. They are Bravo Company PKMR. Uh, like I said, polymer handguards. Um, you don't have any type of rail or anything along the top, so you are limited to what you have over the top of the upper receiver, uh, but you do have your key mod adjustment points down here at the very bottom, and then either side at about the, uh, the two and the, and the 11 o'clock position here on the top. And of course, down here on the bottom, you do have a sling swivel. Now, up here on the edge, you do have a full length, and it is not monolithic. It's a separate piece that can be removed, but it is a free-floated forward handguard, which uses M-lock attachment points. So you have those at both the 2 and the 11 o'clock, the 3 and the 6 o'clock, uh, the 4 and the 7 o'clock, and the 6 o'clock. So really, all of your positioning, other than the 12 o'clock, you have uh, attachment points for any of your M-lock accessories, or you can run M-lock uh, 1913 rail adapters or anything on there as well. And of course, all the way across the top, melding in with the top of the receiver, you do have a very large, uh, you know, option up here for any type of uh, scopes or uh, anything else you want to run up here at the top. So that option is available to you. And of course, this front sight does fold down to get out of your way if you're running any type of scope or anything like that, and you want that moved out of your way. Now, one thing I did not mention earlier is the barrel is a thin profile, pencil profile barrel. That is where a lot of your weight saving is coming from. Uh, like I mentioned, you're about three quarters of a pound lighter. You do absolutely notice that when you shoulder and handle the weapon. It's, it's much, much lighter. Um, anyway, so that's re really where you're getting that. And of course, you have the standard A2 or the heavier profile uh, up here on the Saint. Now, your pros and your cons. Um, Generally, it's accepted that a heavier profile barrel will give you more accuracy just due to the, due to the harmonics and the, the, the less ability for the uh, flexibility or, or uh, kind of movement of the barrel through firing. And a 223-556, I don't know how important that is. And I'm technically not really a high level uh, precision shooter myself. So I do know that the harmonics can play a huge uh, role in that. Heavier barrels obviously will give you more stability and accuracy, which is why you see heavy bull barrels on precision competition rifles. But for what you might be doing with something like this, it might not be a huge issue. The other thing is heat dispersion. So of course a heavier barrel is going to allow you a longer uh, potential heat buildup. And of course the hotter the barrel gets, the more it can uh, again affect the harmonics of your barrel throw off, throwing off your shot. So. Uh, having a heavier barrel is good for that, but the lighter barrel, the number one advantage is it keeps a lighter profile uh, and overall uh, easier to handle, especially on the front end. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the receivers on these. So the uppers and the lowers on both of these are forged from billet 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum, and they are type three hard coat anodized. Okay, that's the finishing process, which is something very common that you will see on soft metals, especially AR-15s in this price range. It is a very good, substantial, durable finish that really uh, keeps the firearm impervious to uh, rust and uh, its scratch resistance and that sort of thing. So really good, uh, positive finishing on these as well. 
Bringing this in real close, of course, the receivers, the upper and the lower, very standard. You have a flat top upper receiver, uh, and the lower is just a very standard A2 type lower receiver. Uh, really no frills and no thrills about it. Uh, of course, you have your fence to lower around your magazine release. You do have graphics on both sides. It is a, a right hand only uh, magazine release. Uh, not magazine release, I'm sorry, your selector switch, which is over here, so it's not set up for an ambidextrous control. Of course, you do have your 90 degree selector positions. Okay, and then this is the St. Edge. Uh, as you can see, the stylizing is a lot different. First of all, we are on the right side of the receiver, and you will notice right away that we do have ambi controls on the selector switch. So you do have a lever on both sides, and they do function in the 90 degree position. Now over here you will see your magazine release. It does not have the traditional fence around it. It does have this kind of uh, little raised uh, bump on this side. Um, as well as over here you do have a little raise up here for your front pivot pin boss, which is just stylized a little bit different from a standard A2. On this side of the rifle, of course, you can see the same sort of thing. Now you do have these, uh, I, w I would hesitate to call them lightning cuts. I mean, I'm sure that uh, they do help and keep the, uh, the the forged aluminum a little bit lighter, but being that it's a light material anyway, it might shave a couple ounces, but this could also be a reason for some of the lightening up. You do have a big cutout of uh, the Magwell too. Traditionally, this would just go straight across. So quite a bit of material has been removed and I could, I could really see that lightening it up just a little bit. Now here on the back, you do have QD sling attachment points if you wanna run a single point sling so you don't have to worry about getting an end plate that has sling loops on it, so that's pretty cool too. Now remember up at the top, this is a flat top receiver. And uh, here on the original Saint as well as the Edge, they do have the exact same rear sight, which is a flip up sight. Of course, you can uh, push this button to drop it down and just grab it. It's not locked down in place. Now, you do have two aperture settings on the sight. You do have a larger and a smaller peep that you can just rotate like this. And the, your windage adjustment is back here too, and you have a little dial, and it does make one half MOA adjustments. Now, the original Saint does just have a standard M16 charging handle. This is an oversized charging handle, which gives you a lot more purchase in real estate here on the back for just quicker and easier manipulation of the charging handle itself. And of course, both of them have the A2 forward assist. Here is the original Saint again. You can see that rear sight is the same. Standard M16, A1, A2 charging handle, forward assist, shell deflector, dust cover, which you see on both of them. Now moving down into the pistol grip, it does sit at an about 11 degree angle, and this is a Bravo Company Mod 3. It does have a really nice feel to it. It's a very heavy plastic polymer type construction with some nice grip texturing here, but not overly aggressive. Uh, really nice and your hand just kind of fits and moves right into that. If you're familiar with a grip angle on a 1911, you will feel right at home. Now right down here at the bottom, there is a little trap door you can open by squeezing these two tabs. Okay, that took me some finagling with. Anyway, uh, that gives you access to your grip screw down there if you want to change out the grip or your safety selector or anything like that. Uh, also, you can store your tactical skittles and your cleaning equipment or batteries or anything you like down in there. So uh, why not? Just a good little enhancement there. Now I brought the uh, Edge back out. You can see it's the exact same grip. You have the uh, Mod 3 by Bravo Company. Now moving up here, the trigger guard is actually monolithic. It is one piece into the receiver and it does have little uh, skeletonized lightning cuts down here at the bottom as well. And then back on the Saint, you can see this is kind of bowed out. So it gives you a little bit more real estate in here if you are using large gloves or anything like that. But you can see the little roll pin in there. You can actually punch that out and remove it and put a standard uh, trigger guard in there or anything else you like. So you have a little bit more usability there. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the trigger starting here with the original Saint. Now this is a single stage GI trigger which has a nickel boron coating on it, uh, which will give it that kind of uh, softer, easier transition between the metal parts. So it's like being heavily lubricated, if you will. So the, the parts just move against each other with a lot less friction because of that coating. But anyway, showing you the trigger here, there's virtually no take up. I mean, the pull starts immediately and then you squeeze through to about six and a half to seven and a half pounds. You'll see there's really virtually no over travel. I'm showing you the reset. So start, start to release and the reset's right there. So a really nice trigger. Again, six and a half to seven pounds. Uh, better than a standard traditional trigger because of that coating. Uh, overall, really good in my opinion. So let's go ahead and talk about the trigger here on the edge. And this has what Springfield calls the match short reset single stage trigger. And the short reset on that is right. It's a really good trigger. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you the pull. So really, as soon as you start to apply pressure, there's immediately a resistance as you're about to break the trigger. Uh, we'll go ahead and show that pull. 
break and do a nice clean break at about six pounds. So a little bit about half a pound lighter than on the original Saint. And then I'll go ahead and show you that reset. Watch this. Start to release, boom, reset. That's like a SRT on a SIG. Uh, really, really, really short reset. Really nice take up. I mean, that's an excellent trigger. That's borderline match grade. So a uh, really good trigger in this. So let's go ahead and talk real quick about the back end of both of these carbines. So both of these use a 7075 T6 aluminum uh, receiver extension or buffer tube, whatever you want to call it. And both of these have heavy tungsten buffers in them. And the buffer tubes are type 3 hard code anodized as well, just like the receivers. Now, the standard state uses a Bravo Company six position stock. You adjust it by pulling on the lever down here, and then you can collapse it and adjust it how you want. Now, the Edge uses something very similar, but this is what Bravo Company calls their uh, Mod O SOP Mod stock. So the only really difference that I can see is that the side portion here is flared out just a little bit more. You might see it on top, kind of it flares, and then on the original stock, it's just more kind of flat. But So it gives you just a little bit more of a cheek weld in that regard. Now on both sides, you have uh, little slots down here if you want to run your sling through here and up over the top, or you do have QD attachment points on both sides on both of these stocks as well. Now here on the back of the edge, there is a single mount point here as well, or a, a QD point as I'm trying to say. So you have one here, here, and on the other side as well. If you want to run single point, and then up here on the front you have in the back if you want to run two point. And then up on the front you don't have any provisions, but because of that rail and M-lock space, you can run a, a you know a detachable sling mount in that regard as well. Now. On the original Sane, of course, you have your two point sling positions back here. You don't have any provisions for a single point up here, but you do have a A2 front sight block with the uh, sling swivel, like I mentioned before, if you just want to run, run a traditional two point sling. So let's go ahead and talk about the bolt carrier groups. So we do have the edge up here on the top and the standard Saint down here at the bottom. So both of these are N16 bolt carrier groups, which are a little bit longer and a little bit heavier, which is a lot of people will argue is better than a traditional AR-15 bolt, which is a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter. Uh, just because of that extra weight and mass really helps with the reciprocation and kind of powering through dirt and grime and buildup within the receiver, just giving a little bit overall better reliability. Now, both of these are melanite treated. You will see the serrations here for your forward assist, of course, which we talked about. Now, both of these are magnet particle inspected, which is a mil spec procedure for looking for micro imperfections in the metal. So both of these have been through that process. Both of these have properly staked gas keys right up here at the top. So all of that is good and well. Now, the stylizing on the bolt carrier group on the, uh, on the edge is a little bit different. I'll bring that in. So you do see that these surfaces have been flattened here and there's some sort of like machining cuts into the back. I don't know the whole purpose for why they did that. Maybe it was to remove a little bit of uh, a little bit of material to lighten it up a little bit. I'm not entirely sure. But of course you do see the Springfield uh, uh, cross cannon roll marking here on this side as well. Here is the traditional Saint bolt. You see there's no cuts or anything up here in the back. This is very M just M16 bolt carrier group is what this is. No difference on, on what you would see in like a Colt. Uh, A1 or A2 bolt carrier group, which are really the same, but other than the little logo there. So, and you do see that, of course, on both through the uh, ejection port door, uh, just kind of giving you an extra little place for the roll marking. So, uh, nice, nice overall, really nothing too different there. Now, the build construction on the original Saint bolt carrier group is 158 carpenter steel, which has been mill spec for a very long time. The Edge actually uses a 9310 steel. Um, which is kind of considered somewhat of an upgrade now that I think a lot of people are moving into. So with the innovations of the metals industry, uh, it's the uh, 9310 is an AISI standard grade for tool steel, which when it's properly treated is roughly 7% more durable than the 158 carpenter steel. So uh, this is technically a more durable option. Is that necessary in an AR-15, M16 sort of variant? Uh, maybe it'll definitely increase the life if it's a more durable metal. So why not? It's an upgrade that I won't argue against. So, uh, you know, just something to keep there in mind as well. Okay, let's finish up here with some final thoughts. And the overall premise or question of this video is, is the Edge worth the four to $500 upgrade uh, over the original Saint? My answer is yes, if the upgrades matter to you. So I basically see a practical use for both. Um, this is more of your entry to intermediate level AR-15, something that is going to be maybe a plinking 
fun on the weekends with your friends, uh, potentially fills that end of the world scenario that uh, you know you might want to fill. If you live out on a lot of property, something that's kind of a wide area defensive weapon uh, or something maybe for varmint, coyote, uh, you know, kind of pest control, anything like that, totally functional and usable, really good and really stacks up against its competition, which I liken to be more like the MSR uh, 15 patrol model or the AR556 by Ruger or the MP15 Sport by Smith & Wesson. So sort of that entry to intermediate level. This is fine, 800 bucks. You probably can get it a little bit cheaper, 750. Really fits well within that niche and it has really good features for that market. This is in a different market. Between the two, there is really an upgrade in every single aspect you look at. Starting from the muzzle brake to the stock, everything throughout the entire thing is upgraded. It's enhanced. The trigger is much better. I mean, it's 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 borderline what I call match grade. I mean, it's a really good trigger. Uh, you have a free-floated handguard that's going to enhance your accuracy. Uh, the lighter barrel won't necessarily help your accuracy, but it definitely makes the firearm a lot lighter. The muzzle brake is going to help your recoil. Uh, the fact that you have a full-length rail system up on top will help you for running optics. You have a better cheek weld stock, which again will be good for those optics, uh, just getting you a more comfortable positioning. Your bolt carrier group is enhanced. Your trigger group, I already mentioned, is enhanced. The overall receiver is stylized better and it's lightened up. So for that, I see this more in the potentially D entry level DMR class or uh, maybe a three gun competition, something that's gonna be light for quick transitioning with good accuracy, good recoil control. So if you're the competitor or um, anybody looking into getting into maybe a little bit more enhanced accuracy, somebody who wants a little bit more usability and control out of their firearm, this 1100 bucks, you're looking more into the uh, MSR Recon. I, and I hope I didn't get the patrol and the Recon mixed up. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. That's kind of the higher end offering, which I think this is actually uh, a little bit of a better option uh, than that. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like the higher end Core 15s, you know, that are kind of in that 1000 to 15. I think that this stacks up, but maybe is not a little bit better than those. Uh, maybe some... Uh, review videos are in order, but this gets a little bit beyond. I think that this is really the, the price point is a little bit higher than like an MP15 or an AR556 because it's dressed up. It's dressed up in like, uh, you know, Bravo Company furniture. And you've got things like you do have a slightly enhanced trigger and things like that. So that's what you're really paying for. I think they actually got into the meat and the bones on this and enhanced things. Uh, the trigger is a massive enhancement. Uh, again, the lightening up overall of the weight and the profile. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I think it's a, it's a pretty cool option. I think it's worth the money if the features are something that you need. If they are not something you need, then it's not worth the money. So figure out what kind of shooter you are and what you want. Again, guys, this is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed that video, please go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, as always, leave those down in the comment section. We will see you guys next time.